Hello everyone and welcome back to Scotland. We are back at the Lindor's Abbey a Whiskey Distillery and it's uh, Dingliran versus Vishwanathan Anand. It's uh, really an amazing game, really an inspiring game. Uh, I really hope you, you enjoy it. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it and you can learn a lot from it. Uh, before we check out the game, uh, I do have a very short announcement. Uh, yesterday uh, I played, uh, well not yesterday, uh, the past three days I was playing a, a chess tournament. Uh, I was able to win all games and I have won my candidate master title. Uh, here's my shiny trophy. There you have it. Here's the, the nice trophy. And uh, like I said some time ago, I don't really play in chess tournaments, especially not ELO rated tournaments. Uh, but uh, I was able to win, uh, I think, from the last 20 games I played in the Croatian League and in my chess club championship uh, out of the, I think, out of the 20 games, let's say, I think I won 19. I only lost one uh, and uh, no draws, so that was... Uh, uh, that, that was very nice, and uh, in the end, the, the end result was that I was able to cross the 2100 uh, ra rating th uh, threshold uh, in the in, in Croatian national rating. So I was uh, well. I think it will be of first June that I will be awarded uh, the, the candidate master title. So uh, th that was. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I'm very happy about that. Just uh, you know. Uh, sharing that with you guys uh, but yeah uh, that being said let's check out this very nice game uh, Ding has the white pieces and he opens with c4 uh, we have e5 and uh, g3 and some of you have already asked on other social media will I be showing any games from this tournament I will uh, I will show some uh, after we finish with this uh, with this tournament and the uh, we finish the Grand Prix uh, then uh, maybe we can show show a few uh, knight to f6 by Anand, we have bishop to g2, and now comes c6, preparing d5. Uh, we have knight to f3, and now comes e4, pushing the knight back, Anand grabs more space in the center. Knight to d4 and d5. Here we have d3, uh, defending the c4 pawn, but also challenging the e4 pawn, and bishop to c5. Here, knight to b3, and Anand pushes back with uh, bishop to, ba uh, to b6. Uh, but it's also very interesting, uh, I mean... The, it doesn't work here, but you always have to check out bishop captures on f2. In some positions it will work and you never know. For example, here bishop captures, king captures, and e3 is very nice. I mean, of course, the, the king will not capture. If the king captures, then uh, you can get a lot of... Uh, I mean, nice moves in as the king is already on e3. But even if the king doesn't capture, let's say you play bishop captures on e3, then knight to g4 will be deadly. I mean, now the king has to go up the board to defend the bishop. And after here, uh, you can go queen to f6 check. If bishop blocks, then you get the g5 in and black gets uh, an excellent game. Uh, but of course, it doesn't work because after bishop captures, king captures on e3, the white king can just go back, let's say king g1. And now you can e even block with d4 and it will be somewhat hard for white to develop develop uh, but uh, it's no real compensation especially not in uh, such a such a long game like this uh, a 25 minute rapid game plus 10 seconds increment uh, but you know for bullet per perfectly viable uh, but okay after knight to b3 we have bishop back to b6 by anand and now c captures on d5 and there are two games in the database where c captures on d5 was played but here anand goes queen captures on d5 and it is already from move 8 that we have a completely new game on our hands so uh, what do you do here seems a bit odd to put your queen on, on this diagonal but anand came prepared for for this game uh, we have castles by ding and now comes queen to f5 you do have to move the queen as knight to c3 is coming either way uh, so be better make it uh, now uh, we have knight to c3 by ding and now e captures on d3 and now if you capture then you will have to play with the isolated pawn for the rest of the game so here uh, ding finds a different way to recapture first e4 pushes back the queen we have queen to h5 now offering a queen trade and now you have to trade queens and you will win the d3 pawn later if you play this then black has a lot of uh, ideas here he can go bishop to h3 he can castle uh, he can go knight to g4 he already has a beautiful bishop on, on b6 uh, so uh, not something uh, Ding is interested in playing against Anand. So here he just captures. We have queen captures, knight captures, uh, and now rook to d1. Preparing to recapture d this uh, very nice pass pawn here. Uh, knight back to f6, and now comes knight to a4. Uh, attacking uh, Anand's bishop. And here, I don't know, uh, 
uh, bishop here seems like a very nice uh, move if you want to keep your uh, bishop pair like bishop to c7 now you get knight bc5 uh, and then if you push the bishop uh, the knight back then just knight captures on d3 and so on uh, but you do get to keep your bishop pair anand has a different plan he he's not interested in keeping the bishop pair he says okay if you capture i'm gonna play a captures on b6 i'm gonna get the semi-open file for my rook and uh, i'm gonna play this game so knight to a6 anand uh, keeps developing pieces uh, we have rook captures on d3, finally recapturing the pawn, and now bishop to e6. Uh, we have knight captures on b6 now, a captures on b6, and now just a3, uh, controlling the squares that this black knight can use uh, to enter the game. And But now c5. Here Anand is uh, preparing uh, c4, uh, which would of course win material. Uh, we have knight to d2, blocking this, and now c4 would uh c4 would be met with rook to d6 it's a very nice idea just attacking the b6 pawn and now if b5 e5 wins the game it would be unfortunate uh, uh for anand to, to end it like this 97 bishop captures you're gonna uh, well the knight is attacked you can move the knight and lose the lose the exchange or you can move the rook lose lose a full piece uh, be, uh it's just not good so here knight to b4 anand finds a very interesting idea uh, he attacks the rook and, uh, <clears throat> uh, of course, uh, the bishop is still undeveloped, the rooks aren't connected, this rook is undefended so you cannot capture uh, due to this uh, pin here, and uh, Ding has to play something. He plays the rook to c3 and now comes knight to a2 by Anand, now attacking this rook. And now you have some problems, uh, if, you, if you just... Uh, move the rook uh, for example to d3 or to c2 anand can just repeat moves uh, knight before attack the rook go back with the knight knight before go back with the knight and uh, i don't know it's a uh he has the black pieces against Ding. I don't know if maybe if the position would, would be repeated here or not, uh, but Ding doesn't uh, uh, allow him to do that. Uh, first, we have to also check out the rook to f3. It's a weird place for the rook to be as it blocks the bishop, but also uh, black can just go uh, queenside castle. And now the rook, the, the knight is under attack. If uh, uh, knight captures on c1, then you would elim eliminate the defender of the d2 knight, uh, white would lose a piece. And if knight to b3, trying to get the knight out of the way, it doesn't work because of just rook to d1 check. Bishop blocks, and now you remove the defender. Bishop captures on b3. So the bishop on c1 is no longer guarded twice. Uh, rook captures, and now knight captures on c1 just wins. The rook is under attack. Uh, if you move it, then the other rook is lost. Knight e2 check. Rook captures, rook captures on a1, and so on and so on. And uh, black is up a whole rook uh, at the end of this very nice variation. So after knight to a2, uh, Ding says, okay rook captures on a2 he gives up uh the exchange temporarily uh but after bishop captures he plays b3 and he says okay uh your bishop is not leaving this prison at some point i will win it and then i will just have two pieces for a rook uh, which of course will uh equal a winning game uh anand says all right we have queenside castles and now what do you do here first ding plays e5 uh frees this bishop to control this very long diagonal uh, we have knights to e8, no trades are really uh, in, in favor of Anand as he does have to keep an eye on his pieces now. Knight to e8 and now bishop to h3 check by Ding. Uh, we have king to c7 and here bishop back to f1. Here Ding isn't interested in rook to c2. Rook to c2, uh, rook to c2 is a really complicated line and uh, I haven't seen the interview if, if Ding was uh, considering it. Uh, but it's uh, it's really a wonderful line. Uh, first, black will capture the knight, rook captures on d2, rook captures and bishop captures on b3. And uh, now uh, you've given back the exchange, but you can go rook to d7 check. King to c6 and now rook to e7. This is the hard move to find, threatening bishop d7 check here uh, to win material. Uh, and then you would have to go knight c7, and then finally bishop to d7 check. King has to go to d5, and now you grab the pawn here. Rook captures, you get king captures on e5, uh, rook captures on g7, and you get this uh, position where it's uh, four pawns against four. A white pawn structure is a little bit better due to black's double pawns here, and white does have the bishop pair, so white would be better in this endgame. Uh, but Ding says, uh, I can do even better than that. Uh, I'm going to prepare it first. Bishop to c1, sorry, to f1. Uh, we have f6, trying to uh, break break up this chain, get the knight back into the game. 
Uh, and now e6, Ding isn't interested, Ding creates a passed pawn here. We have knight to d6 by Anand, and now only rook to c2, That now that the knight has blocked the rook, you cannot go for this same idea. Uh, we have bishop captures on b3, knight captures on b3, and now rook h to e8. And here you can see that uh, uh, Ding now won two pieces for the rook, and Anand has a knight and two rooks against uh, a rook knight and a bishop pair, so it will be very hard for Anand to play this. Uh, we have a4 by Ding, preparing a5, you want to remove the defender of the c5 pawn, and then if that falls, well, it will be very nice for white. We have rook captures an e6, and now comes a5. Uh, we have c4 by Anand, uh, attacking the knight here, now comes bishop captures on c4. Knight captures on c4, we have rook captures on c4 with check, and now rook to c6, blocking and hoping to... Uh, well, maybe even maybe even fix the pawn structure. But we have bishop to f4 check by ding, king to d7, and now comes rook to b4. Uh, well, hoping to win a pawn here, b captures on a5, knight captures on a5, and now knight to a6. And here uh, ding just captures. We have rook captures on b7, uh, king to e8, and now... Uh, first you have to do something about the knight before you go uh, pawn grabbing, knight to b3. And here Anand goes king to f8, he doesn't allow this pawn to be captured, and h4 by ding. So uh, Anand's king is pushed back all the way uh, to the 8th eighth, eighth rank, he still has the two rooks, but uh, the, the bishop, knight and rook will be... Uh, well, it will be top, tough to parry here in this endgame. Uh, we have rook to e8 by Anand, and now comes knight to d4. Uh, we have rook to e7, offering a trade of rooks, Anand would try to hold with rook against uh, bishop and knight since all of his pawns are intact and it's still a very nice pawn chain, uh, but Ding isn't interested, we have rook b8 check, king to f7 and now comes knight to f5, attacking the rook. Uh, rook to d7, you, you can't move the rook from the 7th rank, then rook b7 will be very strong, uh, so rook to d7 and now comes h5, preparing h6. Uh, and now we have rook to a5, uh, sorry, just rook to a5, attacking the knight, if the knight moves it will also uh, attack the pawn here. So knight to d6 check first, uh, we have king to e6 and now comes knight to b5, blocking the rook's attack uh, uh, towards the pawn. King to f5 now, and already you can see that Anand has some devious plans of king g4, king f3, and rook d1 checkmate would be uh, very nice if he can get this in, but Ding of course blocks it, we have king to g2. King to g4 now, uh, f3 not really working as th this would lose you the h5 pawn. So we have h6 and now not trading but rather g5. Pushing the bishop back, king h5 uh, followed by captures is Anand's plan next. We have bishop back to e3 and now comes king to h5. And here we have rook to b6 saying, uh, okay, you capture this, I'm going to capture that. Anand says, no thank you. First I'm going to go king to g6 and only next move... Uh, after this pawn is sufficiently defended, will I maybe capture an h6? Uh, and here you have to be very careful. You can go something like bishop d4, this would lose material, you are threatening to win here, but then just rook captures on b5, captures, captures, and you would then play it. Play. Black would even win a pawn, but it would be basically a drawn rook's endgame. Uh, so, after king to g6, uh, probably the best for, for Ding would be king to h3. Just uh, keeping the tension, and after black makes a move, let's say rook d3, go knight d4, and you know keep everything uh, as it is, just uh, enjoying your advantage and uh, trying to improve little by little. Uh, but here, ding plays g4, and it uh, does uh, prevent the black king from entering uh, any deeper into the position, but it also gives Anand a target. So first, rook to a4, attacking the g4 pawn, uh, king to g3, but this rook to a4 was a, a crucial, a so crucial tempo that allows Anand to create something beautiful. Here, feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move for black. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. For those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. It's just a, just a magnificent move, and uh, I don't think Ding even realized that it was there, but when Anand played it, I'm sure he didn't uh, feel all that well anymore. Uh, but for those of you, uh, you know, who were able to do it, really congratulations. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook to b4. And here, just everything is, is so beautiful. Uh, you can't move the rook. If you move the rook, you're, you lose the knight. Uh, if you lose the knight, uh, sorry, if you move the knight, you can't, I mean, you can't move the knight. Uh, this is taken by the rook, uh, this is taken by the rook, it doesn't really matter if the rook is protected, but uh, 
the, all these squares are covered by the rook. Uh, these squares are also covered by the rook. D4 square is covered by both rooks, so that's not possible. Uh, and if you try knight c3 or knight a3, doesn't really matter, then just a rook captures, bishop captures, and rook to d3 check will pick up the knight. You can block with the bishop, rook captures, you will eliminate this pawn, and black has a completely winning endgame. Uh, on the other hand, if you try something like rook to b8, just uh, waiting and see what happens, then black continues, king captures here, rook to b6, uh, king to g6, uh, and then uh, you can just either repeat, but uh, probably you would have to go something like rook to d6, rook captures, knight captures, and then you would have to, uh, well, play, play out this endgame, and uh, this would be, Anand would be able to hold this, three pawns against two, rook uh, against bishop and knight. Uh, would be able to hold this f to a draw. But here, Ding played king to f3. He finds a different plan. Uh, he says, not going to move anything, uh, but now Anand uh, finds another excellent move. Rook to d3. And now it's even better, uh, because now the knight cannot move to a7 or c7, uh, because, well, if you try something like this, just rook captures. The bishop is now pinned. You cannot recapture. Uh, so it's uh, really, really hard to find a move. Uh, the the best uh, idea for uh, for Ding would be would have been Rook to d6, and this is the only move possible because Rook to b3 is such a such a terrible threat. Uh, here with Rook to d6, it would be possible to continue it, but now you of course uh, get Rook captures on e3, and then after f captures on e3, Rook captures on b5, and you get this Rook's endgame three against three. With black spawn structure a little bit better, but it should be a draw. Here, after rook to d3, Ding played rook to b8. He says, I want to uh, untangle here by giving this check, and then I'm going to move the knight. Uh, Anand says, no thank you. First, king captures on h6, and now Ding just repeats. We have rook to b6 back, Anand repeats, king to g6, and here Anand finally manages to trick Ding and uh, take, uh, you know, uh, grab the driver's seat in this uh, for a very long time worse endgame uh, here Ding's last option is rook to d6 so just going into this trade that we already explained uh, but here Ding just repeated rook to b8 uh, hoping that Anand would just repeat king to h6 and you know it's it's a draw but here Anand says no it's not rook to b3 it seems that Ding just forgot about this move uh, but he was a very low on time and uh, maybe he thought that he it, this would still be uh, manageable uh, some some way, uh, because Ding played rook to g8 check, king to f7, and now rook to h8, saying, okay, I'm gonna give you the knight, then I'm gonna grab this with check, and okay, I mean, it's two pawns against two pawns, uh, two rooks against rook and bishop, but how are you gonna break this? I mean, there's no way to break this, uh, I will be able to hold this with white. Uh, but here, Anand uh, tried so, so long uh, to play this worse endgame, and uh, managed to get a, a superior position, he says, uh, I'm not even giving you this slight chance of a draw, king to g7. And here, uh, it was in this position, on move 55, that Ding Liren uh, resigned the game. So, uh, a beautiful game against Anand, really uh, an interesting game, forced Ding to lose a lot of time with that rook to a2 maneuver, uh, sorry, knight to a2 maneuver, how will he untangle there, and in the end, Ding was, uh, Ding played a brilliant game, he was able to trap Anand's knight, he, he won it without losing anything, and, uh, well, but it's not enough, you have to play the game out until the end, play, play it perfectly, and uh, that's what Anand did, Anand continued playing like, you know, everything was, uh, everything was just fine, and in the end, he prevailed. And that's how you should play chess. You know, it's uh, there's nothing worse than when someone, you know, gets a, a worse position and then you start feeling bad and then you start playing bad moves. Uh, you should always play, you know, your opponent will not play a perfect game. Your opponent is not a machine. And then you will have to wait for your opportunity and just, you know, uh, do, do what Ananda did here. Here, there's nothing uh, anymore to do because after you move the rook, rook e8 or rook to d8, doesn't really matter. Uh, black will just capture the knight and then you have three pawns against two, but now it's completely different. This is now a completely winning endgame uh, due to black having this extra pawn. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to be covering one more game uh, from this uh, uh, Chess Stars, uh, Lindor's Abbey uh, Whiskey Distillery Tournament, and then we're going to check out the standings, as we are, we, we do have one excellent game that we are going to show, uh, and yeah, uh, like I said, I do hope you enjoyed it, uh, I would like to thank uh, Martin Ochenfeld, uh, da David Turnbull, Luca Lamberti, uh, Jasper Hodge, and Biba and Rolif GBR for a contribution to my channel, thank you a lot, I really appreciate it, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content, uh, you know, you know how it is. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your Monday.